You know what I love? Horror movies. I love horror movies so much, more than any other medium the horror genre can be a part of. And you know what I love more than horror movies? Bad horror movies. I feel like if you've been on this channel for a while now, chances are you've noticed my bizarre fascination with shitty 80s horror films. There is something so incredibly entertaining to me about sitting down and watching these overacted movies filled to the brim with the worst special effects you've ever seen, all the while this crazy synthwave soundtrack plays over the whole thing. And while doing research for some movies I've covered on this channel before, I ended up finding a lot of films that fit that description. Movies with ridiculous titles and premises, all of which having the most atrocious reviews you've ever seen. It was like stumbling across a goldmine of garbage movies and I could not have been happier. So naturally, I capitalized on this and immediately started doing some research on them, handpicking my favorites for potential videos. The first of these movies that I will be covering today is one that I desperately wanted to watch after a simple glance at its synopsis, as well as a bit of the behind the scenes. A horror movie by the name of Creepazoids. You can tell by the title alone we are in for a good time. I initially found this film through its poster, which I happened to see while grabbing some images to use for my original video on the Critters franchise. This poster stood out to me for the fact that it may be the most 80s poster I have ever seen, with some ripped shirtless dude fending off a giant xenomorph ripoff while two barely clothed women are just… there. All the while you have a super generic tagline which reads, your flesh will crawl right off your bones, which means absolutely nothing, but it sounds cool, I guess? I mean, it sounded cool enough that I wanted to look more into the film, and thank god I did because its premise is insane. A brief synopsis from the film's IMDB page reads, A group of survivors try to avoid the battles of World War III. When they try to escape to the Quiet Lands, they encounter something much more deadly. An alien-inspired monster flick that takes place during World War III sounds like it would be hilarious. Who wouldn't want to go and see the- Oh, I guess not many people. Yeah, that was the other thing that made me really curious about this film. Nobody saw this. This film grossed only a little over $10,000 compared to its budget of $150,000, which I am sure you can tell ain't that great. Pair that with the collective two reviews it ever got on Rotten Tomatoes and the fact that you can find the entire thing on YouTube and you have a film that sounds so bad that I was practically foaming at the mouth at the thought of watching it. And so I finally did recently, hopping on a call with a bunch of friends and recording our blind reactions to it. I hope you're all in for a wild ride, because this is Creepazoids. Our film opens as all good monster movies do, with a cold open kill that literally makes no sense. Like, this girl is walking around this lab clearly doing research on whatever it is that makes the monsters we see in the movie, and she keeps acting as if she hears something that's catching her off guard, but there's quite literally nothing. Like, nothing is making any sound here except the soundtrack. Door jump scare! Oh shit. Hello. That door wasn't there before. How'd you get here? This girl's talking as if she's hearing something that isn't the soundtrack. So maybe the soundtrack is actually diegetic? Or is this girl just sensing that there is something behind the door? 
E either way, she opens it, gets killed by our Xenomorph ripoff, and we get some text on screen right after that gives us our brief synopsis. The film takes place in the far, far future of 1998, where World War III has left the planet as a husk of its former self. We are then met with our cast of characters, a group of soldiers who have fled from the war in search of a place to hide while they wait for the war to end. We see them roaming a desolate, abandoned city, looking for any place they deem to be safe all the while the most unnecessarily badass music plays in the background. Seriously, this guy right here, Guy Moon, has got to be the most overqualified musician I have ever seen for a film like this. The first, like, 20 minutes of this movie is spent with these guys just walking around boring set pieces doing jack shit, but every single time we get scenes like this, they are always scored with the most intense 80s synthwave you've ever heard. It makes so many scenes in the movie that would have been super boring, unintentionally hilarious, because it gives off the impression that the director wanted these moments to feel super cool, but without context, it just looks like a bunch of random nobodies aimlessly wandering around while Guy Moon goes fucking crazy in the background. Anyways, the plot properly gets going as our band of soldiers make their way into an abandoned laboratory, hunkering down in there only to discover that this place was creating... something. Yeah, I'll get into it in a moment, but the things they were doing in this lab do not make any sense either. All that matters right now is that this guy named Jesse ends up being kidnapped by our good old friend, Xenomorph Ripoff, who drags him into this weird nest looking area so they can have a hot steamy makeout session, which ends in him just waking up the next morning in his bed as if nothing ever happened. He and the rest of the crew eat breakfast together around a table, bonding with one another, talking about what could possibly be going on in this lab, joking around about how Jesse isn't eating any food, when suddenly we learn why Jesse isn't eating anything as he begins convulsing. Because it turns out the monster had infected him with something, leading to his death. This scene sound familiar? It really should, because this is literally just a shitty recreation of the chestburster scene from Alien. I have been jokingly referring to the monster in this film as a xenomorph ripoff, and for the most part, it was because of its design. But the thing with this movie is that from start to finish, it just really feels like the director and writer wanted to make Alien. This scene is almost shot for shot ripping off the chest burster. It has an extremely similar setup. The scene itself plays out damn near identically. Hell, even the shot composition is just a poorly done recreation of the same scene. And the worst part of all this is that this scene, which shamelessly rips off Alien, is easily the best moment of horror in the entire film. It sucks, it's not scary at all, but somehow it is still the most effective moment this entire movie has to offer. Moving on, we learn what happened to Jesse and what was being researched here. This laboratory was constructed for the purpose of finding a way to genetically modify humans to create their own amino acids, allowing for them to sustain themselves without needing to eat. The reason Jesse died was because he was infected by the Xenomorph ripoff monster, which was created in one of these experiments. After his infection, he was fine, until he ate food, which I guess caused his body to become overloaded with the stuff, leading to his death. Now, there are a million different reasons why this makes no sense, but perhaps the biggest one is the fact that this explanation does not even line up with the rules the movie establishes for this monster and how it works. Cause firstly, they never explain why this thing exists. It's just a big bug monster that was human but transformed into this thing cause... proteins, I guess. Secondly, this does not line up at all with what the monster does. Cause with Jesse, it infected him. An infection which only triggered when he ate food. Cool. That works. That operates under the same logic they explained. 
But later in the movie, when Butch gets infected with the same stuff, he just spontaneously dies in the most gruesome way possible for no reason. And what's even dumber is that our main character, Jake, gets kidnapped by this monster like three times throughout the movie, and not a single time does it even bother to infect him. Same thing with the female characters, who he just kills for no reason. So I have no idea what this thing's goal is at all. Is it infecting them to kill them? Because it can clearly do so without this five-step process it takes. Is it infecting them to make them stronger like the experiments were clearly being done for? Clearly not, because it's just killing people. And this explanation also doesn't explain the giant rats that turn people into zombies. Because yeah, those exist. They infect our cast with the exact same infection as the giant xenomorph ripoff, but when these monsters infect people, they become zombies when they die. You can tell a plot is bad when in the middle of the watch party, David Barron is able to come up with a more coherent narrative. We all got so confused by this movie that David just decided to create his own main villain named Rodney the Rat, who had a whole story arc throughout the film. Rats, rats, oh, we are the rats. I'm the giant rat that we Rodney, I'm back! <laughs> Oh my god, it is just a giant rat. I'm Rodney and I'm evil! Girl, do something! Rat! Girl, help! It's just a Girl, rat! do something! Help. Sly, she threw it. Rodney will be back! Help, do something! Do something! Do something! Ow! Fucking yay! My tail! <laughs> it's me, Rodney! I'm a human now! <laughs> Rodney's human oh, sona. I transfer consciousness! Thank god that it threw her onto a place like a bed. I might be evil, but I'm still cur- Anyways, after we get our explanation on how the monster works, if you can even call it that, the movie proceeds exactly how you would expect. Our cast of characters is slowly but surely killed off one by one by our monster, with some of them dying in some admittedly cool looking scenes, and others dying in what I would consider some of the dumbest fight scenes I have ever watched. It is. It was Oh, that's what it looks like. Grab your gun, man! Shoot it! What are you doing? Why, Why are you running at it? <laughs> Bro, it's, it's my turn to die. <laughs> you were holding the gun and charged it. What? And charged it again? Why are they just charging the <laughs> thing? All of this action builds towards our climax, where Jake, as the last survivor, must face off against the Xenomorph ripoff in one final confrontation. One final confrontation which takes up 20 fucking minutes. I am not kidding, and these last 20 minutes are so painful to sit through. This climax consists entirely of an action sequence where Jake is seen hiding from the monster with tense music. The music stops, the monster appears, picks him up, throws him, loses him, and then it goes right back to where it started with Jake hiding. This specific set of events happens three times before Jake eventually injects the monster with something and it dies. Roll credits, movie is over, except no, it isn't. Because surprise, surprise, this asshole has a second phase in the form of a giant animatronic baby that just suddenly is born from inside his chest. No, I have no idea why this happens. I don't even think anyone who worked on this movie does. Anyway, the baby is now our main villain, leading to a new climax where the exact same thing happens again, except instead of Jake being thrown, now it is Jake throwing the baby. We just sit back and watch this grown ass man throw a mutant baby around for like an extra five minutes of runtime and it's just as ridiculous as it sounds. Why are you call oh. What's that buddy? <laughs> Smoochin' time! Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> it actually is Victor. He him into orbit. He's gone! Bye! And just when you thought this climax couldn't get any weirder, it ends with him strangling the baby to death with its own umbilical cord. Which is not something I ever thought I'd say on this channel. 
After that, our movie ends with Jake fleeing the facility, presumably finding somewhere safe to hide, and the baby suddenly being revealed to have survived, teasing a sequel that never happened because this movie didn't even make enough money to afford a single year of college tuition. And that was Creepazoids, a movie that lived up to the horrible expectations I had in every single way. Despite how absolutely atrocious it was, I couldn't help but like it anyways. I had just enough fun with it for the goofy aspects behind it that I didn't really care about how objectively shit it was. It was just silly 80s slop from start to finish, and it was clear that the cast was just having a good time when filming it. I can't exactly say I'd recommend this movie, as I don't think too many people enjoy movies like this one in the same way I do, but if you're insanely bored and want something to watch with your brain turned off, then I guess you'd have a good time. Anyways though, That'll be all from me for now. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it, and I can't wait to see you here for whatever my next project ends up being. Goodbye for now.